GF cheated with her gay friend, who wasn't gay. Now karma's caught up, and she's a single mom begging for my forgiveness. I met my ex-girlfriend in the middle school that we both went to and I found out from some friends that she secretly had a crush on me. I ended having feelings for her too and we eventually started dating. We dated for 6 years and I was constantly ridiculed for dating her and was constantly told that she was cheating on me and I was too young and innocent to believe any of it. We ended up breaking up for a bit in high school but got back together after a week. We resumed dating and dating for three more years up until a year after she graduated. She was a year below me. I loved her very much and wanted to start my life with her. I figured she was gonna end up being my wife someday and eventually be the mother of my children. About a year before the breakup I was introduced to her gay friend Leo who just so happened to be of the same ethnicity as her, I was not. I thought nothing of it and decided not to look into it too much considering he was gay, so I was told. Coincidentally we both shared the same birthday just a year apart which made our birthdays all the more special. About a month before our birthdays my girlfriend decides to take a trip with her cousins to Chicago for the weekend which is a close drive from where we live. All she said was she needed some girl's time and a break from everything. To me it was just another weekend and she decided to go have some fun with her cousins in downtown Chicago. This was normal to me considering that her and her family go to Chicago all the time. That Sunday night I hadn't heard anything from her so I tried to call her and I got no response so I texted her asking if everything was okay. I received a texted back saying, I was serious, I need a break from you. I was confused and at a loss for words as I had thought the weekend with family meant just a break from doing stuff at home. I called her multiple times to get an explanation and she basically laughed it off and acted like I was bothering her. Keep in mind, we had been dating for 6 years at this point so this was a shock to me and I was very upset. I drove to her house which was a mile away from mine and tried to have a conversation with her about what was going on. She proceeded to break up with me and tell my parents I wanted to commit self-slaughtering for some reason. I was heartbroken but she assured me she just needed time and we would eventually get back together. One time I happened to be at Walmart grabbing some items and I see her car parked in the Walmart parking lot night next to her gay friend's Jeep. I call her furious and demand an explanation where she again brushes me off and tells me that we're not together anymore. I'm heartbroken for months. How could the girl of my dreams, the one who I loved so much and had a perfect relationship with, do this to our relationship? For months I would cry myself to sleep thinking I'd be alone forever. Come to find out her gay friend was never gay and she was having sex with him while we were dating. It felt like my heart was ripped out of my body. I felt emotionless. Life was dull and gray just like the scene in Inside Out where Riley loses all of her core memories and loses all emotion. I felt like I could never trust anyone again. Fast forward about a year and a half and she had been in a relationship with gay friend all this time and was expecting a baby at the ripe age of 19. Now we skip to present day where her baby daddy cheated on her and left her as a single mother with no job, no friends, and more importantly, no father, significant other. She has contacted my family members and made TikToks about me trying to get back with me to no avail. I have been together with my current girlfriend for about a year, and I love her more than anything and our relationship is perfect. I don't know if it was the universe or God or whoever that answered my prayers, but in the end, karma is a tramp. This is all true by the way. Thanks for reading. Some comments. Hey good on you buddy. Glad things worked out for you. Client knew his WW had a gay friend, and went along with things till he caught a suspect text. Gay friend was laughing that they had put one past him. He told his wife he needed something from home. Depot. Proceeded to the gay guy's place. He was with a woman and they were both undressed. That was enough. He snapped a whole bunch of pics and said you really ought to stop passing yourself off as queer to get into my wife's pant. Gay guy says, it did work didn't it? That was the cue. My client beat the living crap out of him while his F buddy cowered. He said that you will never contact us again or I will put you in the ground. He returned home, told his WW that her friend will no longer be putting one past me. He showed her the pics and said GTFO. She tried to defend herself but was played the part where her AP admitted it. She was horrified. She said, I can't be the bad one. Too bad that in court, she was. Story 2. This is a long story but I will try to keep it as brief as possible. My ex, 21 female, is Japanese and was studying at my uni in Canada where I, 20 male, met her. We were 18 year old first years and she was living with her boyfriend. 
She had no friends because her boyfriend didn't let her leave their apartment alone and tracked her location. So I helped her escape him and she decided to be with me. Since her ex had trust and control issues, I told GF that I'd always trust her and she should always go out alone and make new friends. But her dad died and mom lost job due to the pandemic so she couldn't afford tuition or rent in Canada anymore. I didn't know this so I got an apartment for us to split for our second year. When she returned to Canada, her mom texted me saying they can't afford tuition and by November they couldn't pay rent and my parents covered it. By December, our relationship was a disaster. My GF lied, swearing she never had sex with her ex, also saying she deleted all pics with him on her phone. But she always hid her phone because she was embarrassed of her young pics. But really she kept the photos and their graphic of her and her ex in bed and a KED. She swears she forgot to delete those pics. I said extremely horrible and demeaning things to her which made her cry terribly and I still regret to this day. We argued almost every day from then and I was verbally abusive. We fell into a depression and would just sleep argue and have sex all day for months. It was extremely toxic. But in April we both got into one of the best universities in Tokyo, and I was excited to make a big change in my life. She went to Japan first and got our apartment ready for July, and I came in September after getting my visa. But my GF was extremely jealous by this point because she saw NUDES from HS girls. Corn and other weird things I said to girls when I was in HS from past DMs and corn I forgot to delete from my phone. She would always accuse me of liking other girls and make me specify features about them that were ugly and also said she was so innocent compared to those girls. I would snap back saying she made love with her ex, which she still denies, and the depression came back. In October she locked me out of our apartment trying to blackmail me into blocking every girl I met on campus. I declined, so she broke up with me and said don't bring girls to our apartment. I was sad but focused on school so I didn't think much and assumed we'd get together again considering how possessive she was. But in December, I saw a pic of her with another guy. This guy was in their club, meaning they met in September, and that she was making friends with other guys while banning me from doing so. I freaked out and she said he's her new BF and it was my fault for being so mentally abusive in the past, which I don't deny, suggesting me to move out a SAP. I find a dorm and am ready to move out, but in January she got back with me. We started having sex again. I returned to Canada in February and when I left Japan, she cried so bad saying she didn't want to lose me and she loves me, so I choose to stay in our apartment as it's cheaper and she agreed. In Canada, we still argued but said I love you every day, and my GF said only look at me and don't talk to other girls every day. By March, she went on her club trip to New York and by then she barely spoke with me after we argued. I came back to Japan in April, and now it was just like it was in December, despite her telling me don't talk to girls and I miss you just a week before my return. She had no time for me, no hugs, no kisses, nothing. Too busy. I massaged her, brought food, cleaned, did laundry, homework help, club help, etc. For her every day, hoping she would fall in love with me again. What did I do wrong? I wondered. On April 12th, we argued cause I told her I'd bring food after class, but since it rained I took too long and she stayed hungry. I said F because she was disappointed and it was like all my progress was undone. But she took it as me saying F you. And that was the end I suppose. The next day, she asked me to bring a friend and starts pestering me to move out again. Saying this is why I said we should live separately whenever I didn't want to leave so she can bring a friend. The whole April plus May, she booked me hotels because she was inviting a friend for the night. I totally trusted her. One day I laid down on my bed and found a protection wrapper, checked the trash and found the protection with the dude's semen in it. I confront her about it and say I'm leaving forever if she ever talks to him again. She says she didn't tell me because I would have freaked out and cried for hours because we have promises and dreams and doesn't want to lose, me, swearing he couldn't put it inside and it was the first time he came over. So I relent and decide to let it go, because she's the only person I have in Japan. But then I see the intercom footage, showing the club guy arriving consistently over April and May. He even came on February, on the same day where my GF texted me I love you and don't look at other girls. I cried more, but she said what happened is my karma for being abusive in the past. Then one week later, she bring him again but I waited at the apartment to confront them. She made it out like I was an obsessive ex-BF who wouldn't leave. She yells I kept telling him you're not my BF, and accused me of sensual assault to our neighbors. Her BF acts like he's protecting her. Then she calls the police and kicks me out of our apartment as I'm not on the contract. Following this I blocked her on all social media, 
and sent all the evidence to her mother. She contacted me on Facebook apologizing but said not sorry for other things. I didn't call the police, and he came in February cause he was worried how I was treating him. I didn't invite him to our apartment. Stop victimizing yourself well okay but if you didn't invite him then how'd he know our address? I blocked her FB and that's it. Two years of my life down the goddamn drain. But I live in Japan now and have my own apartment, which is pretty sick. Some relevant comments. Wow that reminds me of a girl I used to date. Anytime I didn't reply back to her. Took too long to reply back or even didn't say good morning to her she'd straight up accused me of not loving her. And then tell me that we were done only to message me the next day acting like nothing happened. Here's some friendly advice or there for you guys. If you are talking, dating or even in a relationship with a girl who does this she is not the right fit for you. Trust me later down the road she will blame you for everything, ask you for everything, money, and still act like you don't love if you dare say no. So if you have a girl like this end it. Trust me it will only result in her taking your time, part of your life and most of all the money you've earned. Exactly. She accused me of ignoring her and not loving her if I didn't spend 100% of my time or reply fast enough. Yes, while I was in Canada she demanded me for money because I owed her. She paid for a $100 souvenir I gave my grandparents, despite the fact that she owes my parents $5,000 in rent fees and I always defended her against my parents. Her idea was I'm poor but your rich parents can easily afford it so send it. My parents didn't want to send it cause she owe them so why is this on me? So I told her I don't know crap and she should wait. She got new iPhone 14 and was traveling to NYC for her club, probably convincing her get with some other simp who'd pay everything. What did I just read? How do relationships go so far down a rabbit hole? OP, I'm glad you're out of that toxic drama. Take some time for yourself to be single and decompress. Thanks man, it's cause we were living together depressed. We had no friends and just sleep all day and we had nobody else to rely on but ourselves. I felt there was nobody I could turn to so I'd always go back to her and cry and she would come back to me as well within a day of arguing to hug cry say sorry sleep etc. For two years. Story 3. My wife cheated on me four days ago. She went to visit her parents, and while staying there, she went out with some of her childhood friends. They went to a bar and had drinks. There was a guy hitting on her the entire night. One thing led to another, and she had sex with him in his car. Afterward, she was horrified and scared. She ran to her parents' house, where she started panicking and crying, and she told them what she did. Two days ago, she came home and immediately sat me down to confess. I was already stressed from work, so hearing this didn't help. I was enraged. Somehow, I kept my rage in check and asked her to explain. She didn't hide anything. She told me everything in detail. She was crying, but not excessively. I guess she understood that tears wouldn't change anything. She gave me her phone, told me that her parents know, and said that she would like to rebuild trust in our marriage. She will do whatever she needs and whatever I want but also that she will accept whatever I decide. For the past two days, I have felt nothing but numbness. We barely eat, and we haven't said more than a few words to each other. I sleep in another room, and I don't eat what she prepares. I cook for myself now, and she doesn't like it. It makes her even more sad. She doesn't go out of our room. She's mostly crying, talking to herself or reading the internet on what she can do. Here's what I'm thinking. 1. The easy and probably best solution is divorce. There is no trusting a cheater, and there is nothing she can do to bring back time and return to how things used to be. 2. A somewhat optimistic but painful solution is reconciliation. She came clean on her own, willingly gave up her phone and accounts, and told the same story to her parents, which makes her somewhat trustworthy. Her father messaged me to think about it but said he will understand whatever I decide. She is ready to do whatever she needs to rebuild marriage. I thought about couples counseling, but I'm not sure if I want to go there. I didn't cause this, she did. One person destroyed this, not two. I don't know what to do here. This was the last thing I needed in my life, but here we are. Is it normal to feel nothing? Right now, I don't feel anything. It's like I don't care anymore. TLDR, wife cheated, confessed, and is willing to rebuild trust. I'm torn between divorce and reconciliation. Feeling numb and unsure about my emotions and future. Some relevant comments. Oh Jesus bud. Did you ask her how it was she could so easily have betrayed you in your marriage? I'm also leaning towards she was trying to get ahead of someone else who saw the whole thing go down. Who was this man? Did they have any relationship prior? I did but all I got was waterfall of tears. She was his crush long time ago. They are not friends but they know each other. That's what I've been told. She came clean because she was scared one of them would tell you. Nah, her friends don't like me at all, and I don't like them. 
They wouldn't. I wouldn't even be surprised if they pressured her into this. So the whole time she's getting pounded between her legs. She never thought it was wrong and I shouldn't be doing this. I'm on the camp of she planned it. She knew the guy before. She got seen by someone familiar and panicked. That appears to be the case. Still missing a lot of details but it doesn't matter at this point. Update. Hello everyone. I wanted to provide a brief update on my situation and how I've been doing in the last few weeks since we separated. Apologies if it's lengthy. The truth is, I'm not doing well. I'm severely depressed, and I have no clue what I want to do about my marriage or with myself, to be honest. My wife had her birthday two days ago, so I decided to call and meet with her. We met, and I even bought her a small cake with one candle as a present. She cried her eyes out and told me that she thought I had forgotten about her birthday, and that I wouldn't want to congratulate her because I hate her. In all honesty, I felt genuine happiness and warmth inside when I saw how happy she was with my present. The gift itself isn't anything special or expensive, but I suppose it reminded both of us of better times. However, those feelings faded quickly when I remembered what had happened between us. We talked deeply about our relationship, our emotions, and our lives. The conversation was more emotional than I thought it would be. She spoke much more than I did, expressing how awful she feels about hurting me and acknowledging that she can't undo her actions. Despite this, she showed me how she's been actively working to improve herself. She's writing a journal, which is new for her, and she's reading extensively on reconciliation, watching various videos, and seeking therapy. She quit her job to find a better one, but hasn't had any luck yet. And now she's taken up painting as a new hobby, which I think is pretty cool. I think she's really making an effort to change, and I've seen a shift in how she acts. But every time her cheating comes up, she can't look me in the eyes and seems scared when she talks about it. Is she ashamed of what happened? I'm not sure. Is she horrified by her actions? I honestly don't know. I did tell her that I'm happy she's focused on improving herself, whether it's for our relationship or for someone else's sake. That made her cry. I've never been great in social situations, and I struggle to read people well. But from what I've observed, I think the gravity of what she did is beginning to weigh on her, and I'm fairly certain it will only get worse. I did receive an update on her friend's situation and her AP. She completely cut them out of her life, removed them from everything, blocked, unfollowed, after a major, really ugly fight. About her affair partner, the dude bailed out after hearing that we are separating and that our marriage is falling apart. I guess he thought she would be with him after she leaves me, so he ran away. He doesn't want the responsibility of a relationship. On top of being a cheater, she also got used and then disposed of. I don't know how she feels about that personally, but I think it's terrible. What her true intentions were with her affair partner, I will never know. No matter what she says about it, I don't think I'll get a straight answer. If he hadn't bailed, would she have chased him? Would she still be trying to reconcile if he hadn't bailed? Would they be together? Was her cheating a rash decision made out of lust, fear of missing out, or maybe pressure? I don't have answers to those questions. She wanted to know if I'm willing to try again. She told me that whatever I decide, she will honor, respect, and understand. I told her that I don't know yet because I really don't. I need therapy myself. I thought I could deal with this on my own, that I'm that strong and iron-willed, but clearly I'm not. I feel like I'm sinking deeper and deeper with every passing day. I could have been an idiot and said, go F yourself, your work now means nothing, it's too late for that, etc. But I told her the truth, that I don't know and that I want us to stay separated until I make a decision. I also told her that our future is uncertain. I'm not promising her anything. Her work on herself, trying to be better and do better, doesn't mean I will take her back and give her a second chance. She said she understands and that she is willing to put even more work into proving to me that she can change and be a good wife and person. She is also ready to invest time and resources, despite knowing that all her efforts could be in vain in terms of saving the marriage, though not in terms of self-improvement. I told her that she doesn't have to prove anything to me, she betrayed herself first and foremost. I think this affected her really badly because I could see a change on her face, like something died inside. I told her to stay safe and left. When I came home, I realized that this was the first proper heart-to-heart -heart we had in a really long time. It's so sad that the circumstances of our heart-to-heart -heart are so terrible, sad, and even horrifying. If only it had been due to something positive and loving. I will probably write one more update in a few weeks or months, depending on how long it takes me to figure out what I want to do. TLDR, since we separated, I've been struggling with severe depression. Recently, I met with my wife on her birthday and gave her a small gift. It was emotional, and she's been actively working on herself, but her cheating still weighs heavily on both of us. Her affair partner bailed when he heard we were separating. 
am unsure of her true intentions and whether to reconcile. I need therapy to decide. Edit. I used term AP because I didn't know how to call him. After he had his fun with her he contacted her through social media to see if he could have more fun with her but she then told him that I know about them and he never contacted her again. Relevant comments. So sorry for you. I wish the best for you. If you move forward with staying with your wife you have give her total trust otherwise I think the lack of trust will eat you up every time she is away from you. If you divorce no one will blame you. Time to put effort into yourself. Can I suggest gym, catch up with friends, movies, read, cycle, see a show, go to church, study. Basically get busy and distract yourself while improving your mental health. I'm already going to the gym. Friends are not really good. Most of them are split on divorce and second chance. I'm trying to distract myself but it's tough. The fact that he was still able to contact her and hadn't been immediately blocked after the hookup in the car. As well as the fact that she told him she was separated rather than immediately telling him never to contact her again. Is another deal breaker to add to the list. Why tell him she was separated? Why even continue a communication with him? He was a one night stand and total stranger. Disgusting behavior aside, she's lucky she wasn't slaughtered. That story was the beginning of a Dateline episode waiting to happen. He contacted her after the hookup, before that they had no contact. After I kicked her out he contacted her. He probably learned that from her friends. That is when she told him that I know and he never contacted her again. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.